Am I the asshole for spending a large amount of money on a trip with my dad instead of paying the debt on my boyfriend's house? I, 29 female, recently got in a fight with my boyfriend, 30 male, and his family because I refused to spend my savings on a house payment. That could result in him getting kicked out of the house. So context, I've dealt with mental health problems all my life, but when I turned 20, I was at my worst. Due to that, I couldn't maintain a stable job while studying in college. My parents have always been supportive of me. They let me live with them and my dad paid for my psychologist, medicines, and all of my college education and maintained me until I was 24, while also taking care of my mom and my three younger siblings. He is a super hardworking man and I've never seen him quit. To think he enjoys and loves me and my siblings the best he can. Top tier parenting and I love him to death. Fast forward to this year. I have a stable job that pays really well and I've started saving money for the past five years because I really wanted to do something for my dad as a thank you for all of the sacrifices he has done for me. His dream has always been to go to Disney World. We are not from the US and stay in one of those fancy hotels, but he was never able to do it. And now that he is retired, he thought he would never be able to. So I've been saving money in secret to make it happen. The only one that knew about my savings was my mom and she loved the idea. I've been with my boyfriend for one and a half years now and he has a good job, but he's not the best at taking care of his finances. He bought his house before we met and he's still paying it. Due to his poor management of money, he has started to accumulate a debt on the house payments and a few weeks ago, he told me that there's a chance of him losing his house if he doesn't pay the debt. Last week, I finally reached my goal and had enough money to take my dad on his dream trip. Just the two of us. I told my boyfriend that I was really excited, but he was livid. He told me how could I be so selfish and go on a stupid vacation when he was about to get kicked out of his house. He also told me that if we were in it for the long run, I should help him get out of that debt because it could eventually be my house too. We don't live together. I live in a small apartment. He also told me that he's... You'll be back? All right, are you taking the girls? I, what? Are you gonna give me a kiss or are you not? You plan on just leaving and not saying shit? I love you. He also told me that his trust was betrayed because I was hiding the money I was saving from him. A good partner does not do that. I told him that it was not my responsibility to pay for his debt, but he kept yelling at me, so I left. He told his mom and sister about it, and now both of them have been harassing me, going to my apartment and my work, telling me how horrible I am for not helping him and trying to convince me to pay his debt. I get that my boyfriend is going through a hard time, but this is something I've been working really hard to achieve since my dad is starting to have difficulties to walk and his eyesight and health in general is getting worse. I don't wanna wait any longer to take this trip. Am I the asshole? No, it's your money. And I think it's really sweet that you decided to do this for your dad after everything he's done for you. I would personally walk away from this relationship. I understand he's going through a hard time. You guys aren't married, it's not your responsibility. Even if you were married, it's not your responsibility to get him out of a debt that he's accumulated on his own. When he realized you had money, he thought it would be like a quick way to like, let me get mad at you and hope that you're this pushover and you're just gonna be like, oh, okay, well, here. And it's good that you're standing your ground because it's not gonna end at this. He said that you guys could eventually live together. He wants you to move in there so that you could pay half the bills to make it easier for him. And what happens when he mismanages his money again? Is he gonna expect you to pay the full mortgage for him without really getting anything? And if his family is going over there harassing you, why don't you tell them, I would have told them, you know, why don't you guys go get the money and bail his ass out if it's such a big deal. It's not my job to do as a girlfriend. We have an update, so let's see what happened. Okay, first, thank y'all so much for the advice and knocking some sense into me. I read all of the comments and tried to watch my situation from all the perspectives you gave me. So thank you. So here's what happened. After things calmed down a little, my boyfriend and I talked. He actually apologized and told me he never intended to come on that aggressive. He was just very stressed with his situation and took it out on me. He also talked to his mother and sister to stop harassing me. He told me he didn't know that they went to see me, that he only vented to them because he was angry, but never told them to do anything, which I kind of believe. His family has always been a bit too much. 
He recognized that it was not okay for him to expect money from me, but he did want to be with me and even started talking about living together. I told him I understand that he was stressed and I also apologized for being insensitive and talking about spending all that money on a trip when I knew he was struggling. That was totally on me and I did feel bad for that, but I told him that he had no right to be mad at me for keeping my savings a secret when he hasn't been transparent with his finances either. I didn't even know how much his debt was until that day. He never wanted to talk about it with me. Basically, I told him I didn't want to be in a relationship with someone that reacts that way about something I care so much about and accused me of being selfish. So I broke up with him, saying maybe we needed some time apart and he was not happy about that. Long story short, it was a very dramatic and nasty breakup, but I got out of there and I'm safe now, thankfully. Y'all were right, I dodged a bullet there. I also managed to keep it all from my dad, so the trip is still a surprise for him. Gotta thank my mom for that. I have already started to book things for the trip. I'm planning on it being in October since I've seen Halloween is huge. I've already started to book things for the trip. I'm planning for it to be in October since I've seen Halloween is a really huge thing there. Also hoping wave in Florida passes. I'll reschedule for next year if necessary. I saw all of the tips in the comments and took notes, so thank you for all of those too. I'll give my dad the news on his birthday, mid-September, once I've booked everything. And again, thank you all so much. Well, I'm happy. I get that he's stressed about the house. He has no one to blame but himself. That does not excuse how he's going to blow up on you and demean you in that way. Calling you selfish, having his family harass you. I honestly think that he was just playing nice because being a bully to you wasn't working. He was going to try and like love bomb you into giving him the money. Can you imagine if you moved in and he had access to your documents and he could mess with your financials? He would expect you to just roll over. But I'm really happy you kicked him to the curb. You deserved so much better. Am I wrong for telling my coworker off in public after she announced to my students I was pregnant? Here's a rule of thumb. Don't ask. Don't ever ask anyone. Even if you're like 99% sure someone's pregnant, don't ask. Let them tell you. You know how many times I've like assumed or like, damn, this person's probably pregnant and I've never told them and I let them tell me when they're ready? That's what you're supposed to do. Like, shut the f up and let people have their moment and let them tell you when they want to tell you. Ugh. We recently found out that we are pregnant. I, 26 female, was terrified as my family has had a rough go of miscarriages. I went to the doctor, everything was okay, but we were still only 8 weeks and things go wrong all the time. That night, my husband, 29 male, came home and said Karen, 63 female, yes, her real name, was digging into him at lunch asking if I was pregnant. He played it off and told her no. Husband and I are teachers in the same building. The next day, Karen came into my class and announced my pregnancy after guessing and no facts. I told her and my class no, just a routine physical. My 7th graders got awkward and pretended they didn't hear. She left my room and that evening I ran into her at a local restaurant. She kept asking me why I was avoiding her. I said I was upset and needed space. She didn't give me space. I warned her that if she asked one more time, I was not going to hold my tongue. She asked. I went on a rant about how inappropriate it was to assume pregnancy for anyone. If I was pregnant, she stole our thunder by starting a rumor. If I wasn't, she started a rumor that could be painful. I could have infertility issues and struggle to conceive or carry a child. I could have found out bad news at the doctor or I could have been at the doctor doing biopsies for cancer. In short, she did not know and should not have dug. She scoffed and said, sorry, while walking away. A lady nearby came over and hugged me and said she was proud of how I handled myself. I wish more people of the older generation understood boundaries and praised people for sticking up for themselves. For the next four weeks, she refused to talk to me or my husband, talk trash about a program she helped me for and I implemented to our coworkers, and has acted like a child in any regard around us. But I lied to her. We are 13 weeks today. We announced our pregnancy last week and Karen said she was so excited that she was right and asked if her and I were okay. I said I needed space but she is constantly waving and in my face asking how I feel. I believe she is doing this and hopes I just get over it. But honestly, I don't know if I have the space to forgive her right now. So, am I the asshole for yelling at her in public and lying to her even when she was right? Hell no, this is what happens, okay? These old ass farts, okay? They are so used to, I'm older, you must respect me, da 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 da. They think they can do anything to you because they're older than you. No, boundaries are boundary, and they don't think that applies to them. So you have to call them out and say, you cannot do this. They're so used to getting away with everything that they think they have all the power and can do no wrong. I... See, that would have, if that happened to me, that would have pissed me off. I would have went to HR. I'm like, hey, 
this lady is running her mouth on me and disturbing my inner peace. Yeah. Am I wrong for telling my son's teacher that technically my son can't give consent to appear in his TikTok videos? My son's a sixth grader and his math teacher uses a lot of videos. They did a class project on geometry where groups of students did shorts and they watched it and the teacher posted it on his school website and on his TikTok. I understand social media is popular with kids and it's not going anywhere so you might as well try to moderate it. Just like junk food, but I began to wonder if this was a personal project for the teacher rather than a class project. Like, I would probably be okay with it if this was strictly a class thing and if my son was okay. After wrestling with it, I spoke to my son and said, I'm fine with you being in class videos, but not okay with you being on Mr. J's personal TikTok page, not without my permission. My son said that he told Mr. J it was okay and that made me laugh. I said, you can't even be trusted to shower every day, let alone decide when you can appear on someone's TikTok page. Am I wrong for telling my son's teacher that my son can't give consent to appear in his TikTok videos? My son said that he told Mr. J it was okay and that made me laugh. I said you can't even be trusted to shower every day, let alone decide when you can appear on someone's TikTok. So I sent an email to Mr. J telling him what I thought and my stance. That's when he replied that I gave consent when I signed his classroom agreement and he uses those pictures and videos of students and no parent has ever complained. Plus his TikTok page is also his class TikTok page because you realize no one watches YouTube since 2017. He said he's not hiding anything and this is what teachers do to make dense subject material interesting. Then he thanked me for being a concerned daddy as a backhanded insult. I replied that none of my son's other five teachers are doing what he's doing and probably because they don't have time to play on TikTok, but that's okay. I expect my son to be a math whiz and we will check in later. Am I wrong for canceling my brother's wedding? To make a novel short, my 27 female, brother 30 male, met his future wife 28 Ella at a party 3 years ago. Honestly, we never got along but I always tried to put up a peaceful front because my brother seemed blissfully happy with her. Ella was mean to me a lot. Like, a lot. She would make comments about my weight, my makeup, and especially my dog. She hated animals and hated that I would bring my lap toast to my parents or my brother's house. It always just felt like something aimed to hurt me. When the two got engaged, she asked me to be her maid of honor since she has no sisters or many girlfriends. And since my brother seemed thrilled, I obliged. What I failed to realize when I accepted the role was that her maid of honor meant planning the entire wedding. Like I was booking venues, florists, jazz band, everything. Even worse, she expected me to put my credit card down for all of it. My brother and her are not exactly well off, and since I have a well-paying job, I didn't mind holding the deposits, but it was starting to add up to a law. Every time I asked Ella about him, she would say that it would all be paid back by her parents before the wedding. Well, flash forward to last week, about three weeks before the wedding, and she's unbearable to be around. She can't last more than a few sentences before snapping at anyone. So when I, of course, brought up the money, shit hit the fan. I asked if she had received the updated receipt of everything owed when she exploded. She called me a whole line of terrible names, but the one that stuck out was her saying, What do you need the money for anyway? Your sick dog is dead now. My beautiful Toasty died about a month before this, after he fought the bravest battle with cancer. He was my soul dog and I was devastated. I blinked at her and simply left the room, having no energy to even respond to something so cruel. I went back to my car and after the 20 silent minute drive home, I parked the car and immediately called the vendors and canceled any deposit under my card. Every single one. After almost 20 calls, all that was left of her wedding was a dress and the flower arc. I texted my brother a short explanation. I told them that every vendor would be contacting him if they wished to keep their services and they were now responsible for covering everything and that I would no longer be attending. It was a matter of minutes before my phone started to explode and I just turned it off. It's been a few days and I haven't talked to anyone but my mom, who thankfully understands where I was coming from. My brother has tried to call, but I just feel terrible, both about what I did and about what she said. I know what I did was extreme, but I also couldn't sit by and practically enable her cruelty anymore. I still can't help but feel bad for ruining my brother's big day, so I don't know. Am I the asshole for this? You would think that you'd be kind to someone doing you a big as a favor as you were for her. If someone was helping me with my stressful ass wedding and put their card on the line for me, you think I'm gonna jeopardize that at all by disrespecting her and just being mean? No, absolutely not. You definitely did the right thing because now she will realize that she was being a and being a has consequences. 
story time about me being the toxic best friend. So my best friend was dating this guy for about a year and a half. And for the past six or seven months, she would say that she wasn't happy. She didn't like how she was being treated, but she couldn't leave him. Well, at this time they lived together. And that night we were supposed to decorate her apartment for her birthday party. So since she was at work, she just told me to go over her house and start decorating until she got home. Well, who happened to be there but her shitty ass boyfriend? And him and I didn't really get along. Well, him and I were setting up and he was being super nice. Like overly nice, which really weirded me out. Well, later on after the party, my best friend was hammered. So we both put her to bed and started cleaning up. And we were both drunk and started flirting with each other. And then one thing led to another. And I did it with my best friend's boyfriend in her house. So for the next three months, we have like this secret relationship, like for part two. Part two to me being the toxic best friend. So like I said, him and I had this secret relationship for like three months straight. And I would always just go over to my best friend's house while she was working and see him then. Well, the one day she came home early from work and she walked in on her boyfriend and I in her bed. So after that, she finally got the courage to leave her boyfriend and now she's happily married. So I kind of saw it as I pushed her to do something that she knew she would never do. And after having my number blocked for like three years, she texts me and she says, I wanted to thank you for what you did. You showed me that I could leave my boyfriend and that you were actually just a terrible friend. But now I'm happy for her. She's living the best life that she can live and I'm still with her ex-boyfriend. My ex-girlfriend wants to place our baby for adoption and I'm not sure if I can. I'm 23, my ex-girlfriend is 20. We met in college. I've since graduated, but she has two years left. She's 21 weeks pregnant and wants to put the baby up for adoption. She was around 14 weeks pregnant when she told me that she was pregnant. We had already broken up two months before that and I honestly had no idea she was pregnant. She said that she needed space to make her own decision and then that's why she didn't tell me. From the moment she told me she was pregnant, I told her that I would support whatever decision she made. I respect that it's her decision. I believe in a woman's right to choose and all that. I feel guilty that I got her pregnant. I'm internally panicking at the idea of a baby and the idea of being a father is wild and unreal to me right now. But when she told me that she was planning to put the baby up for adoption, it felt like a gut punch. She's already connected with an adoption agency and is looking at possible adoptive families. In no way do I think that she should be forced to be a parent. I would never want to contribute to that. I completely understand her reasoning. It's just making me feel sick. She seems as content as she can be with the decision. She knows this is the right decision for her. I don't know if I can consent to it. I've started researching contested adoptions. I think it's sort of crazy and I'd have to be willing and prepared to completely support and parent the baby on my own and be able to prove it. I feel guilty thinking about coming in and ruining all of her plans. Maybe it wouldn't be fair to anyone for me to do that, but I'm becoming more uncomfortable with the idea of adoption every day. I haven't told her how I feel because I know it took her a while to come to her decision and even though she feels it's the right one, it's also a highly emotional thing for her. I spend a lot of time trying to rationalize why adoption is the best thing for everyone, but I really don't know what to do. Here's a little story time of what my crazy celebrity ex-boyfriend would get mad at if I did or did not do. He would get mad if I would, for example, go to the DMV and put lip gloss on to take a picture. He said that I was trying to get attention from other guys and the fact that he wasn't going with me proved that I was trying to get attention from other guys, therefore pick up guys at the DMV. <laughs> He would also get mad if I showed him too much affection or if I tried to kiss him because he said that that meant that I was a nymphomaniac and that the only conclusion he could come to was that I was cheating on him because I was a nymphomaniac. So eventually I stopped being affectionate altogether and that made him think that I didn't want him because I was never affectionate. So I told him one day, well, if I am affectionate, it's bad, but if I'm not affectionate, it's bad. And he said, you're right, so you're stuck. He would also, for some reason, think that I was Lil Wayne's side chick. So anytime a Lil Wayne song came on, I had to Part two of what my celebrity ex-boyfriend would get mad at if I did or didn't do. He would get mad if I answered the phone too quick because that meant that I was hiding something and I didn't want him to be suspicious, but it also made him mad if I didn't answer the phone quick enough because that meant that I was definitely doing something bad. He would also get mad if I offered to go over to his place instead of mine because that meant I was hiding guys in my apartment, in my bathroom and in my closet. So he would randomly show up to my apartment, check underneath my bed, my closets and my bathrooms. And when he saw that there was no one there, he would store him out and say I'm gonna catch you one day he would also get upset if my manager or my agent call me telling me that I had an audition because it made him envious although he would say that what they were trying to do was actually pimp me out he would get so envious and jealous if I had booked a commercial if I was working on set or if I had anything going for me in my life other than him part three of all the things that would make my crazy celebrity ex-boyfriend jealous and upset 
I happened to look like Lil Wayne Celebrity X at the time, so Lil Wayne happened to say my name in a rap song, although I didn't know Lil Wayne, and he thought that that meant that I was for sure sleeping with Lil Wayne, although I didn't know Lil Wayne. He thought that I had all these connections with rappers and that I spent time with them every single week, although I spent my time with him all the time. He would also get upset when random girls on the street would stare at me for any reason because he thought that her and I had this whole history and that I was trying to take her guy, and for that reason, she hated me. And for that reason, she was looking at me. It couldn't be anything else. Like maybe she liked my clothes or something. It had to be the fact that I was doing something bad to her. He also hated when guys stared at me because that meant that I knew the guy from someplace and that the guy was following us around, keeping tabs on me because he was probably my pimp or my lover. Right. And God forbid anyone gave me a compliment, he would get envious and jealous, but if someone said I had nice eyes, I hated it. I would avoid eye contact with people just so that no one would say anything. Part four of what would make my celebrity ex-boyfriend crazy, jealous, and mad. Because he was so jealous and controlling, I never put my phone in my pocket or in my hand or anything like that because I didn't want him to think that I was hiding anything from him. I always left it in plain sight so that he could check it if he wanted to. So this one time my mom called me and I answered the phone. He was right there in front of me and I said, hi mom, blah, 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 blah. We had a bit of a conversation and he got up and left. So I stayed in the room and I left my phone there and then I went to the kitchen where he was and he comes up to me and he says, who was that on the phone? And I said, that was my mom and he's like no it wasn't that's why i had to leave the room because i couldn't stand listening to you lie to my face i said why don't you go check my phone to see if it's actually my mom so guess what he does he goes and grabs my phone and calls my mom he says who is this he was so rude to her i was mortified and worse of all my mom thought it was a joke so she kind of started laughing and then he hung up on her after that he didn't speak to me for at least a week and then he broke up with me this is why skipping detention might be a good idea. When I was in high school, I slacked off a lot. My junior year, my math teacher was pretty upset by this. Once during a parent-teacher meeting, he told my mom that I wasn't doing as well as I could and called me lazy. My mom agreed and stated that she wouldn't blame him if he pushed and punished me to work harder. From this day on, he did exactly that, always questioning me before anyone else and always sat next to me during exercises. This is when my classmates started realizing that he was a little obsessed with me and started teasing me about it. Right before Christmas break, he threw us a surprise party with chocolates and mock champagne. He poured me an extra glass and congratulated me for doing better. I drank the first glass he gave me, but not the second because I'm diabetic and had already had too much chocolate. During the next class, I felt extremely sick and almost fainted. I spent the rest of the day in the nurse's office and chalked it up to eating too much candy. A few weeks later, I failed a math test. He became extremely angry and yelled at me in front of everyone. The look in his eyes chilled me and I cried. He gave me detention but scheduled it hours later than the usual time and said he would personally be there as well. When I showed up, it was getting dark already and I noticed I was the only student there. Something felt off and a feeling deep inside my gut was pushing me to skip. Right when I decided to skip, I look over and see him walking towards me. Part two of why skipping detention might be a good idea. As he walked towards me, I was getting nervous. I told him that I had an emergency and I had to go, but I would email the school and reschedule later. Right after this, I ran off. As I was running away, he yelled at me and told me that I had to obey him and come to detention or he'd call my parents. At this moment, I didn't care. The feeling in my gut kept growing, so I sprinted to the bus and went home. I was afraid that he'd call my parents, but my parents greeted me normally when I got home, so I assumed he didn't. The next day, I was expecting to get an earful, but he wasn't there, and as weeks passed, he never came back. Then a shrink came to our class and asked if he'd like to talk about our math teacher, but no one knew why. Fast forward a few years later when I became a teacher and started chatting with my coworker. I mentioned his name, speaking to her about my weird, bizarre teacher and how I skipped attention. That's when one of the oldest workers there went pale hearing his name. It turns out a few days after I skipped attention, my math teacher was arrested for downloading child you know what from the dark web. He also had tons of snuff videos doing terrible things to children and teens. Now I always wonder what would have happened if I hadn't followed my gut instincts and stayed for detention that day with just me and him in that classroom. This is the story time of how I found out my ex was married. I cannot believe I haven't told this story sooner, but I honestly think I just trauma blocked the fuck out of it out of my mind. Like it just hit me yesterday. I was like, huh, that motherfucker was married. I totally forgot about that. So I was seeing this guy very on and off. This is my cheating, lying, loser, ex-boyfriend if you guys remember him from my other story times in the beginning we were super on and off because i just he would lie about dumb fucking things like he lied about his age and i was like why the fuck are you lying about your age like dumb shit like that right one day we were laying down we're about to get back together and i was like my big thing was like no more lies like i can't do the fucking lies anymore so just be honest with me so we're laying down and he's like there's one more thing that i do need to tell you and i'm like okay like what is it and he's like i'm married immediately i'm like oh he's fucking kidding like i don't Oh, like that was my first thought I was like oh this is a joke like he's just fucking around with me so I go oh my god thank god you said something because I just wrapped up my divorce about like six months ago so it's good to know that you've also been married 
Because I think we're fucking joking. Because I I'm 23 years old. The thought of someone being married is like absolutely insane to me. Especially the man's whose dick I just had in my mouth. Like there's no way there's a married man in my fucking bed. My ex is like, wait, really? I'm like, yeah, I just signed the divorce papers. You know, it's been like such a rough time. Like haha jokes, cause it's a joke. Like he can't be fucking married. And I'm like, he tried to like rob me for all that I have, you know, because like I'm so rich and successful. Like he just tried to rob the shit out of me and I don't think I ever want to be married again. My ex is like, wow, I had no idea. And I'm like, he's like really, like why is he so, why does he believe me? My ex is like, why did I never know this? And I'm like, oh no, like I'm fucking lying i was never married he's like what the fuck is wrong with you well, i'm like wait are you dead ass married and he's like yes i am immediately i'm like ew you gross ass bitch like get out of my bed like that's my first reaction i'm like you disgusting motherfucker you're married in my bed get the fuck out of my bed and he's like oh my god it's not like that like i had to get married for my green card and I'm like, but you're still fucking married. Like, that's weird. Like, I like I don't know anything about this. So just like, I'm like, get out of my bed. Like, this is fucking weird. And he's like, if anything, I should be mad at you for like lying that you were married. I'm like, get the fuck out of here, you gaslighting king. Like, get the fuck out of here, okay? Mine was a joke. I thought we, I thought this was all jokes. He's like, I'm married. I had to do it for my green card. Like, I'm not even in contact with her. Like, all these things. And I'm like, I'm not, I don't know this life. So I'm like, what the fuck? What part two? You would think like, oh, Livy, you left his ass after you found out he was married like yeah you did <laughs> no like i didn't i was in my dumb bitch fucking era but i was just like super uncomfortable by the whole thing but he just tried to explain it to me but you guys imagine me telling my fucking friends and family that my boyfriend is married i called my best friend and i was like dude like i need to tell you something like frenchie is fucking married and she's like oh my god thank god you left his crazy ass and i'm like wait about that no, babe, I did it. We're actually back together. I'm calling you to let you know we're back together and this motherfucker is married. My best friend's like, Livy, really? And I'm like, can you not be so fucking judgmental? Like, that's a world that we don't even know. Like, neither of us need our green cards. Like, we don't know this world. I'm just getting wildly defensive for, like, no fucking reason. Just trying to make it seem normal that my ex was fucking married. I call my mom. I let my mom know one thing about my mom. She'll always be a little too supportive. She's like, Olivia, like, I think that's fine you know like it's a tough world out there you gotta do what you gotta do like thank god my mom gets it but in reality it's just like dumb and dumber at that point like the fuck did she even mean it's a tough world out there like why are we even justifying the fact that this man is married why am i still with him not even a red flag that's a red firework to the fucking face that's like bitch get out and i'm like you know what i'm gonna stick by his side like the dumb bitch that i was telling my sister was the worst like i didn't really want to tell her for a while. I honestly only told my sister when him and I were on a break because I was like, okay, if I tell her this, like, I know I can't go back to him after this because she will be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? If I tell her, I'm like, yes, is he, he, um, he's married. And she's like, Livy, what the fuck? I'm like, it's for a green card. Like, it's for a green card. You know, we don't know that world. We'll never have to experience that. She's like, I don't give a fuck, Livy. That's weird as shit that he's married. He hid it from you. All these things. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm like, don't worry, bitch. I'm never going back to him. Get for like two weeks, I went back to him. And she's like, are you actually mentally fucking ill? Like, you need to go back to therapy. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm like, sorry, you miserable bitch. I'm in love. Like, I'm in love. And she's like, no, you're insane. Like, I told my therapist, she was like, Livy, really? Really? Like, that's a very big red flag. You know, he's lied about other things. How do we know this is not like a real marriage? I'm like, cause it's fucking not. Like, we're in love. I did leave him six months later not because he was married because he brutally cheated on me but we all could have seen that one coming with this man being fucking married that is the story time how i found out my ex was married and then i had to tell all my friends and family and look like the dumbest bitch in the world story time about how i befriended a sleep paralysis demon when i was just a little kid i started having terrible nightmares that would wake me in the middle of the night i would reach out into the darkness crying for help it was always the same horrifying nightmare over and over again it got so bad that I didn't want to go to sleep. Most nights, I would just stare out of my bedroom door. This all changed one night when a solid black figure appeared before me. He was dressed in a cloak and a flat brimmed hat, just standing in my doorway. He had no face, he spoke no words, and he never moved an inch. He was creepy as hell, but for whatever reason, he didn't scare me. The emotion I 
I felt from him was a deep, sorrowful loneliness, and I know he felt my fears from my nightmares. I asked him if he was lonely and scared like me. He didn't respond or move. He just stood there in silence, but I felt a sense of shock in the air. I'm not sure if many people tried to speak to him before. I ended up talking to him for hours in the dark. Before he arrived, I felt lonely and scared, but having him there gave me a sense of comfort. When I asked for his name, he didn't respond. This is when I decided we were going to be friends, and I named him Shadow. Little did I know, Shadow would stick with me and end up saving my life one day. Part 2 of how I befriended a sleep paralysis demon. When I asked Shadow to be my friend, I felt his emotions shift from surprise to happiness. That night, when I closed my eyes, for the first time, I didn't have a single nightmare. On nights when I felt his presence, I always had good dreams or no dreams at all. I talked to him in my dreams or wake up from a nightmare to his arrival. He'd pull me away from my nightmares and stand forever silent as I spoke to him until I fell into a dreamless or happy sleep. As I grew older, he would protect me from more than just nightmares. When I was bullied in school, I'd hear my bullies speaking of their horrendous nightmares the next day. When I slept at a friend's house who also had night terrors, she would sleep peacefully. She never knew why she slept so well when I was present. This has continued for 19 years. However, when I finally felt Shadow's touch, it saved my life. One night as I wandered to my boyfriend's, he followed close behind. As I approached the house, I saw a terrifying man creeping about. This person was dangerous and as I walked closer, Shadow touched my shoulder and screamed. I felt Shadow's fear and I heard his warning telling me to stay away. When my boyfriend saw me, he told me to never go near that man and if he's ever around again, then I'd have to run. That man was carrying a gun that night and Shadow protected me.